Oh boy, I started in 1996. Uh, me and a friend were over in Galena uh, shopping uh, for Christmas gifts. And I have a, a friend that's uh, very hard to buy for and uh, he collects nativity sets and I saw in the glass uh, window of one of the shops over there a uh, three-piece set of the Three Kings okay. uh, by Christopher Radko. I thought well, that would be a good one and there will be the other series to get um, in future years. So we went into the store and um, all their Christmas is on the second floor and we became uh, uh, enamored at that point with all the different ornaments they had. And uh, the education began there. We found out that most of the glass ornaments uh, in the history of them were made in uh, Central Europe, Poland, Germany, Italy, uh, Czech Republic. Uh, I try not to, now in my uh, current days, I try not to buy any ornaments that are made in Asia. I still kind of a snob that way. And okay. <laughs> Central Europe is where I like to see my ornaments come from, or, or domestic, if there's anything made in America. Um, so that's kind of what got me started on them. Okay. And haven't stopped since. <laughs> Maybe you could describe some of the ones you have here. Oh, uh, some of the ones here, uh, the to closest to me, these are these are actually uh, kind of bland looking, but they're very rare. These are uh, glass capped ornaments that they made uh, at the height of war rationing dur during World War II. Um, so 43, 44, um, no metal in them. They're uh, just glass uh, with a paper cap. They're known as paper capped ornaments. And these were mainly made by Corning Glass Works. Okay. Uh, which is now making light bulbs. Uh, so these are very hard to find because, again, most people threw these out because they were really, really bland mm -hmm. after the war. And then the bright, shiny brights came out and they took over. So these are a good one to find if you can see those out antiquing. Okay. Uh, next tub over here is a lot mm -hmm. of just assorted vintage ornaments, which is really my focus lately when I go out uh, antiquing, is looking for vintage ornaments, uh, mainly just because of uh, the amount of years they've been out or around and not been broken. Um, Again, most of these are uh, European descent. Uh, some, some unique ones in there. Some very nice ones. If you ever see anything uh, with the tube or the balls wired together, these are usually from the Czech Republic. That's what that region of Europe is known for. Okay. Uh, anything with an annealed or added on, like here, these little starbursts, those are usually from Italy. Mm. They're, they're known for adding on uh, uh, to their ornaments. Okay. Uh, most of those, again, probably 1920 through 60s. I'd say. Okay. Um, this tray here, um, most common uh, type of ornament uh, brand that you know of uh, that's mass produced is uh, Christopher Radko ornaments. And these are a few of my Christopher Radko ornaments here. Again, I probably have a thousand of his ornaments uh, mm -hmm. in my collection, so it's really hard to just to pull a few out. Yeah. Um, these other two trays are uh, uh, the pride of my collection is Patricia Breen ornaments. Uh, these are made in Poland. And uh, this tray here, these are all exclusive from the Art Institute of Chicago. I try to get all their ornaments every year when they when they come out. They commission, and they're exclusive to, to these particular ornaments. Okay. And uh, these are uh, more of our open line ones. So in a nutshell, that's that's kind of the ones on the tray. With all those ornaments that you have, you actually do have one that is your very favorite. That's I do indeed. Uh, it's my grandparent chromes uh, from my father's side ornament. Uh, I discovered this back in high school, back in the uh, early 80s, uh, when I was going through some storage totes uh, at home. And uh, uh, this is a German ornament uh, with the uh, the wire wrap on it, and the uh, they call it a Dresden ornament, the little paper uh, attachments, um, known as a Dresden ornament. Mm -hmm. So that's a balloon uh, shape. And uh, I'm glad I didn't, uh, back in the 80s, I wanted to uh, strip it down and paint it neon colors and make it more of a... <laughs> modern look, so I'm glad I didn't, because this is the treasure that will be handed down in my uh, family for generations. Yeah, you know, again, they were mass-produced back in the day, but still, uh, a lot of them didn't survive. Yeah.